Now, I know you touched on one thing, actually, right before that I wanted to ask you a little more about, because I think, you know, when you were talking about the difference between, you know, what the 442 contributed, mm -hmm. and you were saying and being able to help the ESA to get mm -hmm. citizenship, I was thinking about for, you know, like audiences and even maybe your own grandchildren who don't know about what it was like. Mm -hmm. Could you describe how different it oh, was for Japanese yeah. Americans oh, yeah. before and after? Uh, before the war, the uh, people that came from Japan, the, uh, your grandparents or your great-grandparents or wh whatever, came to this country, they, they could not vote, they could not buy land, uh, they couldn't do, uh, they could just live here. And uh, the uh, only people that had citizen was the one that was born here or fought for the country in World War I. Like my father-in-law, he, he was uh, one of the veterans and then uh, one of my our good friends. He was a veteran. There was a few Japanese uh, Issei's that uh, was a vet, vet veteran, and they, they, they got their citizen papers, so they were able to buy property uh, or home or whatever. But the people from the old country couldn't buy a home or nothing till after the war and after, four, after they came back from the camp. And about a year or two later, the United States government uh, started awarding citizen pay, uh, for the ESA, and qu quite a few ESA acquired their citizen paper after they got uh, was uh, was able to, and they were uh, ESA that got them. They were proud to be a citizen of the United States. That's my, I know that much, you know. Great. 